Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. Today is the day that I talk about the Ferrari. And I'm going to talk about the car like no one else does. Because most people who have these cars, they don't talk about the issues they experience with them. They only talk about all the good stuff. Because it's a general belief that if you talk about your car in a negative way or if you talk about a brand in a negative way it will devalue your car your investment first of all cars are not investments but now I'm making this video because this car is going and another one is coming in its place but as much as I've enjoyed having this for a while I think uh, the number of issues I've had with it are far more than the enjoyment. So the car spends at least one week every two months in a garage and it's for trivial small things. It's not big issues, uh, something majorly going wrong. Simple things like, you know, when you get in the car, you switch on the engine, the comfort entry mode should bring the steering down and push the seat forward stops working the steering just stays up and you're like driving a tractor and you can't even bring it down so i took it back several times they couldn't fix the problem uh, i asked them to take the battery out and put it back in uh, to reset the whole system and that fixed it then the passenger seat when you push the back of the seat forward it slides so I'll show you but that stopped working so this basically when you pull this lever and push this forward the seat is moving forward to make space for the passenger to get in and once that's done you push it back and it goes back into its place very simple electrical feature stopped working so I had to take it back one dealership said they had to take the seat out take off all the leather and everything and then figure out what's wrong with it and it's not covered under warranty so this car has only done 8000 miles it's a very very low mileage car which is in really good condition and they're telling me that i need to pay for the seat to be ripped out and then fixed. I said no, so I took it to another dealer. And then these are all Ferrari um, authorized dealers. And I said, can you reset using your computer or unplug the seat and plug it back in? And they did that and it started to work. So generally, so as you can see from the inside, the car looks very beautiful and same thing in pictures and videos that people make it's a beautiful car but in reality when you own this you realize that this stitching it's okay it's nothing amazing the supposed leather here I don't know if it's real leather it looks like it but it's not very well done generally overall the car is not beautifully finished especially if you've come out of an Aston Martin um, the steering for example this piece feels really cheap this feels okay this is carbon fiber so of course that's the same but generally um, this alcantara looks beautiful but when you touch it it's a bit rough not very nice and soft to touch the leather is very ordinary so people keep telling you oh ferraris are amazing and they are beautiful and it's Italian leather and Italian this and Italian that. Unfortunately, the truth is that most people say that because they want to keep the hype of the brand. The marketing machines have done a very good job at this because they have made people believe and accept that it's okay to have faults. Whenever I have a problem with the car, I talk to someone and they say, but it's a Ferrari, that's okay. Since when is it okay to accept faulty products? And that's what annoys me, that you pay a lot of money 
for this car and then you don't get the value for money, you don't get the quality that you need or expect or deserve and then when there's a problem people say it's okay, it's a Ferrari. I don't understand that. Maybe this isn't the brand that I should have bought in the first place and a lot of you will probably say well you shouldn't have bought a Ferrari but I would say back to you maybe you should expect more from Ferrari to give you a product that works. So the guy who bought this car before me ordered it brand new. He paid 190,000 for it. He drove for 1500 miles and then he sold it and I bought it for a lot of money because it's a very highly specced car. And then I have been unhappy with this car for so long that I've decided that it's very beautiful to look at on the outside, but on the inside, the drive, the comfort, it's not nice. And what's the point of having a car that just sits there and I don't even feel like driving it? Whenever I want to go out, I end up taking the RS4 because that feels like a solid car. So the biggest gripe I have with the Ferrari is the front of this car doesn't seem to be connected to the back. So when you're going over bumps, you can feel the front is kind of like moving like that while the rear is stable and it seems like there's a lot of flex in the chassis because the car should go like that at the front not like that it's very hard to describe it you need to drive it and you need to compare it to even uh ferrari roma doesn't have this so the California T, and I, I haven't driven a California long enough to know whether it has the same problem, but this car, I've been really unhappy with that, that feeling. You don't feel like you're connected to the road. You don't feel like you are, uh, you have enough road grip. The other problem that I had, which cost me so much money and so much headache, was whenever I went over uh, 70, 75 miles an hour, uh, and mostly I was doing this in Germany where on the autobahns where I was accelerating and going fast. The steering would start to shake. So I had the wheels, front wheels balanced six times. Six times from different places including Ferrari. Problem wasn't fixed. They said the front tires are worn slightly but maybe you should change them. They might have a problem. So I changed both the tires. The problem was still there. Then it went to Ferrari and they kept it there for two, three weeks and they started removing each one of the wheels one by one and then they would ask me to come and I would go and test drive the car to see if it has the same problem then I would bring it back then they would remove the wheel. So through the process of elimination uh, they figured out that the front right tire, the new one, was faulty. So I don't really understand. The old one was faulty, but then the new one was faulty. So I then replaced the tire again. It cost me a good 1,500, 2,000 pounds in just finding out this problem. And then it's kind of still there about 10, 15%. The steering is not solid like in one place it still has a little bit of vibration when I drive it at high speeds and never had that with any of my other cars and I was driving through Netherlands to the south of France this summer and all throughout the on the autobahns I was swearing and shouting and angry at the car because I couldn't drive it faster than 70-75 miles an hour because the steering would start to shake and I took it to several places along the way i think we went to one in belgium uh one in netherlands um one probably in switzerland i'm not 100 percent sure but we definitely went to one in germany and then to the south of france the ferrari dealership there just to get the wheels balanced every time and every time they say oh it's only 20 30 grams it's not a big thing but we'll fix it and the problem was still there so in the end i just wanted to get rid of this car because it's just a pain in the backside the thing is, if you tell someone this, it doesn't seem like there's any problem with the car. They'll say, oh, you're just being fussy and these are little things. But like this plastic here along the window, 
you have to grease it or oil it or put some leather balm on it because it starts to squeak from time to time. And then you're driving and there's like squeak, 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 squeak in the back. Um, the seat belt has a little thing that you can't really see probably, but it's got a little clip at the back and that keeps falling off. So whenever there's someone sitting in the back, they'll pick it up and say, oh, what's this? And you're like, pieces falling off the car. And again, when you talk to someone, they say, oh, it's a Ferrari. Well, what exactly are we paying Ferrari for? To give us substandard products and then not even complain about it? So I don't know if I'll buy another Ferrari, maybe at some point. The customer service is great, which I love. People are really lovely. Uh, the dealers are very nice. And the car drives like in a straight line is quite good. It's fast. I've had some fun. But in the last couple of years that I've had it, it's just been one thing after another. In the end, I just got fed up and thought, you know what? I should buy a car that doesn't have these little niggly problems all the time. Maybe I'm not designed for these kind of cars that are constantly breaking down. And if the rest of the world accepts it, it's their business. I don't really like to have faulty things in my life. There are enough issues and stresses in our lives that these little toys and things that are supposed to bring us joy should not add to the stress. Um, so I thought I should make this video because everyone just raves about how amazing these things are. No one ever tells you the kind of issues because everyone is scared that, oh, if we talk about this, the brand will devalue and I will lose money. You lose money no matter what, because cars are very bad investments. Anyway, I hope this was not as disappointing, but uh, I thought there should be some truth out there on the internet about these things because everyone just says positive things and raves about thing, cars and uh, Ferraris and things. So maybe it's time to show you the other side. Of course, if you want to know great things, there are plenty of videos that you can go and watch by these uh, journalists who tell you how amazing these cars are. But they're not the ones who are living with them and paying for them. Um, when you've paid so much money for something, you want to have quality for it. If you, I don't know, bought a tap, and I keep going back to basic things. If you bought a tap in your house for the bathroom or the kitchen, and it kept dripping every day. And sometimes you turn it on and there'd be no water coming out. Would you be happy with it? No, you wouldn't say, oh yeah, it's Ferrari, so it's okay. No, you want things to work. So why is it different with the cars? It's because the marketing machine from these companies has created this image that, oh, these cars are so amazing that you just accept the little niggly bits that you have with it. Well, I've had so many Porsches, never had a problem with them. I, I had uh, the Aston Martin, never had any problems with it. This car, Time to time, I have to turn it off and turn it back on because the sat nav won't work or some of the electronics will, some light will come on and say there's something wrong. And basically it's nothing wrong, just it needs a reset. A reset. Ferrari is the only car that I've ever bought which comes with a battery conditioner. Why? I left my Porsche for six months and there was no problem. The battery didn't die. This car, you leave it for two weeks, the battery drains, so you have to keep that trickle charger plugged into the electricity. Basically, the car's electric circuitry is not very well built, and it's obviously leaking current, and that's why the car goes into this low battery mode. Instead of fixing the root cause and fixing the circuitry, they've just added a battery conditioner as part of the product. I think it's just unbelievable that people say it's okay it's a ferrari anyway most of my videos have started becoming rants or maybe they all are so but they have to be honest there's no point giving you bullshit because some of you will benefit from it because you you might want to go and spend a lot of money on something that's not really worth spending money on so i hope you enjoy this and uh, more videos to come thanks for watching